Hello, Prime Minister. Good to meet you and good to have you on our program this evening. Good evening, Irvashi. Prime Minister, the EU today is proposing a full Russian oil ban for its member states. How important is it that a full embargo be in place? It is very important. First, one of the most important things is to create full, a full embargo for oil and gas because uh, Russia is country terrorist which finance terrorism against of Ukrainian people. They make genocide and uh, crime against humanity on the territory of Ukraine. And all of these crimes are financing from the Russia budget. So budget is fulfilled by money earned because of the uh, selling oil and gas. And I would like to uh, note that Canada was one of the first country which uh, make this embargo for oil and gas from Russia. And I would like to uh, say our biggest gratitude to Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, and Vice Prime Minister Christia Freeland. So they uh, make their own efforts and all the government of Canada. And thank you for this. Prime Minister, uh, Canada imports far less oil and gas than Europe does. And, and you mentioned the gas part of it as well. And I do want to ask you, because the embargo the EU is talking about right now is focused on oil, uh, not gas. And Europe is very dependent on Russian gas as well. Uh, the German ambassador to Canada on this program uh, said to me last week, if Germany thought cutting off Russian gas would stop Putin from invading Ukraine, they would do it, but they don't think cutting off gas will stop Putin from invading Ukraine. Do you agree with that? We can see that many European countries are so much dependable on Russian gas. And we understand, and these European countries understand that during this winter, for example, they uh, have energy crisis because of Russia have influenced on the European Union and on that countries because of this gas supplying like uh, like they use it like hybrid weapon. Do you think if Russian oil and gas exports were completely cut off, do you think that would stop Putin's invasion? It will not stop uh, invasion immediately, but it will help us to fight against them because they will will begin weaker and weaker during the time because of they will have no money to finance this uh, crimes and this war. Canada has supplied uh, military aid to Ukraine. Uh, we are having a little bit of uh, a challenge in figuring out how much of that aid has actually been received by Ukraine. C can you help us understand how much Canadian military aid, lethal aid, is actually in the hands of the Ukrainian military? I would like uh, once again to gratitude uh, to Canada government, to Canada people uh, for support, strong support of Ukraine, because Canada always was initiator of uh, new uh, methods uh, of support of Ukraine. First of all, I should uh, note that Canada initiated and Prime Minister and Vice Prime Minister initiated to support Ukraine financially. And Canada uh, gives us one billion Canadian dollars through the special uh, IMF administrative account. Another one issue and another one option is support of Ukraine uh, in military sphere uh, through the weapon support. Uh, it was five hundred millions Canadian dollars, which uh, Canada uh, make for Ukraine. We also so much appreciate this support. And we also are working with uh, government of Canada uh, and with Prime Minister of Canada under the next step. It's uh, confiscating of uh, frozen actives uh, of frozen assets of Russia uh, in Canada. Uh, Russia as state and Russian oligarchs and not just frozen, but confiscation and next uh, transition of this money, this assets to Ukraine for recovery, our country. And uh, I hope that it will work. And I also will ask government to uh, finish this work and to uh, will ask parliament to support this uh, legislative uh, initiative of your government. 
The, the $500 million of lethal aid that you mentioned, of military aid, uh, we have spoken to uh, an MP, for example, uh, from, from, uh, from Ukraine who said, uh, and this was maybe a week ago or more, that they, hadn't, they didn't know how much of that was coming or when it was coming. Can, can you tell us of that $500 million or of the Canadian aid that's been promised, how much is actually on Ukrainian soil? So, uh, for now, we are waiting for buying this weapon. We ask for uh, heavy weapons, so we need armored vehicles, tanks. Uh, we need uh, MLRS systems, so some named multi-launch uh, rocket uh, systems. Uh, so, all of this we are waiting that we will buy with our partners uh, and uh, which of them will be on soil in Ukraine, it, it will be uh, opened later after the war will finished because you understand that this information is very sensitive and we uh, do not make it publicly but in any way we are very transparent and we make all the reports for all the money and all the weapons for our partners and it will be opened immediately as it will be possible in recent weeks prime minister we've seen a number of politicians visit kiev to see uh, the damage, the destruction for themselves, and also now the, the effort to essentially rebuild in the capital city. Uh, do you think that Canada's Prime Minister or, and or Deputy Prime Minister should visit Kyiv? We are waiting them so much. Uh, we will be very glad. It will be a big honor for us to uh, host here your Prime Minister, your uh, government members, vice prime minister. So uh, if nearest time it will be possible, we will be very glad. It will be a big signal uh, of and symbol of support uh, of Ukrainians by the Canada, Canada Canadian government, because uh, one uh, point is support by finances, by uh, sanctions, by weapon, but another, uh, another point of view is when high-level politicians visited our country and demonstrate right here their friendly uh, relation to our country. So we appreciate this so much and wait your prime minister and your uh, government members here in Ukraine anytime. Have, have there been any conversations with Minister Freeland, for example, about the, the possibility of a visit? Uh, we have absolutely regular uh, conversation and uh, negotiations uh, with uh, Vice Prime Minister uh, Freeland and with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, we discuss all very, very uh, important uh, questions, issues, challenges. For example, for the uh, last times, we discussed challenge of food crisis in the world, but uh, we always invite your government to Ukraine. So I hope that will uh, that they will visit our uh, country not a uh, long time uh, in future. And just quickly, to your knowledge, are there any uh, extra security concerns for, let's say, the prime minister here in this country versus the prime minister of the UK? Is there any difference in the security concerns? I should say that uh, here in Kyiv is relatively safety and relatively quiet uh, because we uh, liberate Kyiv region, Sumy region, Chernihiv region. So the main war now is uh, in the west part of Ukraine, in the, on the east part of Ukraine and uh, on the south part of Ukraine. Uh, but unfortunately, Russians are bombing all the Ukrainian territory by rocket missiles. Uh, so uh, danger is existing. But if compared with uh, times when uh, Prime Minister Johnson visited Kyiv, nothing has changed. So there is, here is relatively safety. But we always use all possible safety measures when our foreign guests and partners visited Kyiv. So uh, I believe, I'm sure, I hope that uh, this visit will be absolutely safety for your prime minister and your uh, government members. And just one final question, prime minister, if you'll permit me. Uh, can, there are discussions about Canada uh, reopening its embassy. Uh, many of our allies have already done so and others have sent diplomats back to Western Ukraine. Do you think Canada should reopen its embassy in Kyiv? 
many uh, i think that uh, most of the embassies are reopened their offices here in kiev so we are waiting for canada in kiev and i think that it's proper time to uh, reopen your embassy here in kiev because many of kiev inhabitants are coming back to kiev now kiev is absolutely uh, a live city like before the war so it's proper time thank you prime minister i very much appreciate your time thank you so much